What's up, Airbnb Nation? I'm Danny. However, this video is not for you guys this time. This video is for the founders of Airbnb, Brian, Nate, and Joe. I know you guys personally. I'm hoping that eventually you'll find this video. This is a critique of Airbnb. Now, if you know me already, you know that I love Airbnb. I mean, I spend my life doing stuff related to Airbnb. But I'm also critical when that time is needed. And that time is needed now. They say when it rains, it pours. Airbnb is getting some heat. They're raising money. Things are iffy. So I figure what better time now than now to do this. The thing that ultimately motivated me to do this, to create this video, was because you've increasingly Airbnb started focusing on things that don't matter or matter just a little bit in lieu of things that actually do matter. For example, the most recent, uh, the most recent example of this is where you just recently wrote in some code to your website which precludes me from adding emojis to my title, something that makes me more competitive and has, has, has no negative guest experience with it. Now, the feedback I have is long. It's, for, it's over three years of notes that I've taken. Why it's been three years is because I was hoping to present it to you, Airbnb, at Airbnb Open, which you have discontinued for some reason and without telling the host community. I would like to know why you discontinue that and if it will ever come back. Kind of like the co-hosting payments you guys decided to discontinue. You know how useful that was. You know how many people were using that. Why did you discontinue it? Please bring it back. So this is a critique. Let me be very clear. This is a critique. I'm being critical of Airbnb. There's a lot of things I like about the platform, but there's also a lot that gives me increasing concern over the future of Airbnb. Now, how could I not be critical? After being a prior employee, I'm a super host. I'm a property manager. I wrote a book, the best-selling book for Airbnb hosts. I help Airbnb hosts across the globe improve the Airbnb business. And in fact, I'm an Airbnb super guest. You guys talked about that program, Airbnb, two years ago. You were going to roll out a program called Super Guest Program. You have never done that, nor have you communicated anything about that program. Nevertheless, I have slept over 1,100 nights in Airbnbs. I'm in an Airbnb right now in Bali. Now, let's get into the feedback. There's three issues that I'm going to cover. Usability issues, things that cause me concern as a host, and general suggestions for improvement. Questions I have to you as a company, they're ordered in order of importance. They're in order of importance. The very first one that I, like all hosts, deal with on a daily basis is the slowness of your platform. Your platform is very slow, just to be very direct. Your platform is so, so slow. What you're watching now is a video that I have. I'm going to the Airbnb homepage and I'm gonna go to a message thread of a guest. And you can see the delays in this process. I'm gonna let you watch it. I'm not gonna speak so you can feel the pain of this because I go through it every single day. Me and all of your hosts, all of your million plus hosts, go through this every day. Think about the time that is being wasted on this process. Now, the app is no different. The app is equally as slow. Check this out. This is craziness. This is absolute craziness. As a business owner, I know the importance of having a quick, rapidly loading website. My website used to load at six seconds. I know now, I realize how much revenue, how much increased visibility, how much increased guests I was losing because of that delay. Now, for new Airbnb, how much has your growth been affected by guests, new guests coming to your platform and clicking away right away because they're not going to wait six seconds for your website to load. Now, this is something new that you guys just put up recently with your, with, with your uh, update. Why when I go to Airbnb and I click manage listings in the top right corner on my profile button, you take me to the dashboard? That's not a very good usable feature. If I'm clicking manage listings, you should take me to the manage listings page. Next point about photos, editing my photos. So why? And Brian, Nate, Joe, specifically Brian and Joe. You guys are designers. You have lost touch. You have clearly handed these duties off to someone else who is failing miserably in this department. I'm hoping that this feedback will 
cause some change because it's tremendously frustrating. Here's another one about the photo captions and deleting photos. So when I go to the photos to add or de to delete photos or add captions, why when I click edit caption, you're seeing this now, do you make me click another button? I've already communicated to you that I wanna add a caption. Why are you bringing me to another page? You guys made an update to this. Whereas in the past, I would click that edit caption button and I would be able to write the caption right then and there. Perfect, great job. Now you did an update and it brings me to another page. Additionally, to delete a photo, it also brings me to another page. Whereas, whereas before this update, there was a button on each, on each photo that said delete photo from the main photo dashboard with all the photos being displayed. Did an update, now I have to click two buttons. Again, you guys are designers, you know better than this. The platform has been going downhill in usability over the years. It has not been increasing. Your best app was from 2016. There have been no improvements on your application since then. So why does this photo thing seem to make me so frustrated? It's making me frustrated because you're not respecting my time. It's the golden rule for us hosts. I teach my hosts, you must respect your guests' time. You guys should abide by it too. And lastly, with your photo update, this just started happening recently, but when I'm deleting photos in the back end, it's not updated real time, there's a delay. So I've deleted a photo, that photo is still there. If I reload the page, it goes away. So if I'm in China and my listing is in New York City, the listing seems to get blocked off 12 hours before it should be. So for example, if I say reservations can be made until 3 p.m. today, well, if I'm in China and my listing is in New York, well, that, that listing does not go blank at 3 p.m. It goes blank at 3 a.m. So the time zone should be based on the listing, not based on where I am physically in the world. Hey, so uh, as you can see, I changed my face, but when I recorded this originally, Yesterday, I forgot to mention three rather important things, so I need to record a second video here. The three things are, first, when I'm in the Airbnb application, you require me, when I click on the listings, you're seeing a, a screenshot of that now, when I click on the listings, I have to scroll through all of my old inactive listings and get down to my active listings. So I understand the reason. I understand you want more listings, you want me to activate inactive listings, but there's a right and a wrong way to do that and asking me to activate the couch in my shared living room in a city that I no longer live in from seven years ago is not the right way to do that. Additionally, it's just tremendously frustrating. It's one of these usability issues. You're wasting my time. I have to scroll through all of my 13 inactive app uh, listings to get to my app, to get to my app, it just doesn't make sense. The second thing I forgot to mention that is probably more frustrating is when I, ha it's on the app again, you're looking at a screenshot here, when I have a active reservation, an active inquiry, sorry, an active inquiry, I am not allowed to, I can see the title of the listing, but you don't allow me to click to that listing. I can't see that listing. I can't see that listing, it just doesn't make any sense. For hosts who have many listings, I might forget what title correlates to which listing. So I'm talking with a guest, the guest says, hey, is there a washer and dryer there? Well, I wanna go to the listing real quick to see. I cannot go to that listing. I have to go back out to click the listings tab, scroll down my inactive listings to my active listings, click the active listings, click the preview, click the, the amenities tab in this specific example. So the correction is, in the message thread on the Airbnb app, allow me to click directly to the listing the guest is inquiring about. This is true for the guest side too that I'll cover in that video. Link will be in the description when it goes live. And the third thing which is also rather important, uh, but to be honest, I'm not sure if it's on Airbnb or the phone. I use an Android. Uh, if you have an iPhone, let me know if this is the same for you, but it only shows me one notification, the most recent notification for Airbnb. Now with other apps that I have, if I have if I receive six text messages while I slept, well, it shows me here's your six messages you missed while you were sleeping or where you were away from your phone for this extended period. But Airbnb only shows me the most recent notification. So if I have numerous notifications, especially if I'm a host and a guest or a host of numerous units, I've missed messages in the past because of this, this feature. So I would love it to see Airbnb notifications just like text messages or any other app where I could see, okay, you got six notifications in the past, you know, X hours, three messages, uh, one inquiry, etc. Suggestions for improvement. The first is as a host, I would love an analytics which show me what cover photos do best. Let me know how many clicks did this cover photo get? How many clicks did each cover photo get so I can choose the best one? I would love the ability to remove weekly discounts 
for individual weeks, high demand weeks. For example, in San Francisco, Dreamforce, yeah, typically in September, October, November time frame, is a week long event. People come there for maybe sometimes two weeks. I don't want my discount to apply, and, and they book six, nine months in advance even. I don't want my discount to apply to that week. I just want to remove my discount for that one week, wipe it off. There's, in general, the search needs to improve big time. The search needs to improve. As a guest, I'm gonna do a video and I'll link it, link to it in the description, but I'm also doing a video as a guest, improvements that you can make Airbnb for me as a guest. One of them that works for both the host and the guest is create a, create a forum where a, a guest can say what they want. In cities that there's so many Airbnb listings, for example, Bali, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of listings, it is so hard with your current search setup to figure out a listing that I want as a guest. So a forum where I could post as a guest, kind of like people do on Facebook, hey, here's the location I want, here's the blah, 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 the criteria, and me as a host or my team can go on and send our listings to these guests who don't have time to search, but that I know is a good fit. Please consider adding length of stay to the review. A guest who is staying one night is not really all that relevant to a guest looking to book for a month. A long-term and short-term guest, they have wildly different needs. Uh, I'm, in a, I'm in an Airbnb now um, in Bali and, and it has great, great reviews, but it's also in the middle of coronavirus. So this is the, I'm the first long-term month-long guest this host has accepted. And even though the overall review is 4.9, which is exceedingly good and the, the reviews are very lengthy, I've checked in here and it's, it is below my expectations because of a few things, one of which a big one is the kitchen. Uh, I use the kitchen as a long-term traveler. Most guests don't. There's a lot of lacking kitchen amenities, old kitchen amenities that most travelers here for a day or two don't notice or wouldn't bother bringing up because they're only here for a day or two. I, w I want to know also as a guest, hey, a, re a review from a long-term tenant, that's much more relevant to me. You already filter reviews by language and, you and by business traveler. Also, please filter reviews by length of stay. Please promote my floor plans. Look, the reality is negative reviews are bad guest experience. Negative reviews are the result of mismanaged expectations. I have created a floor plan drawn to scale, to colors and everything that I encourage all of my hosts who I advise purchase and put in their listing because it sets the guest's expectations. Me as a guest, me as a host, this is a win, win, win for the host, for the Airbnb, for the guest. I'm flashing up some examples right now of these, of these floor plans that uh, hosts honestly love, they absolutely love them, and guests love them too. Custom amenities would be great for me as a host to add in. If I have some super unique custom amenity, I, I might want to add that in. That would also give you guys, hey, this amenity we can add in, you know, what's more common and what's not. Video, video to listings would be good. It, it, it does make a big difference uh, for the expectations thing. 3D video or 3D uh, visualizations, uh, these would be great for the, for the guest especially. Please encourage guests to leave an honest review that does not have to be five stars. Now, Airbnb, you guys have changed your reviews from just showing one decimal to two. It used to just say 4.8 or 4.7, now it says 4.77 or 4.84. That's a great improvement, but too many guests leave five-star reviews. As a guest, I wanna feel empowered to leave an honest review. As a host, I want the guest to leave an honest review because I want to let the future guests know that my listing and my hosting strategies are exemplary on every level. But right now, all the hosts, all the guests are leaving five-star reviews for their hosts. They might give negative private feedback, but hey, a four-star listing on Airbnb, even below a 4.6 on Airbnb is like a listing you just want to stay away from. That shouldn't be the case. A five-star listing should be an exemplary, really, really good listing. A four-star listing is, is above average, is very acceptable. A three-star listing is average, you know, average. A two-star listing, below average, one-star, pretty bad listing. But right now, it's just, it's so hard, and this would make it very easy for the guests to search, especially in markets where there's a lot of competition. And last but very not least, if a guest does not have a completed profile, they cannot even reach out to me as a host. As a host of seven years, property manager, etc., I have realized that the amount of time a guest has put into filling out their guest profile directly correlates oftentimes to how good or bad of a guest experience I'm gonna have as a host. This matters, and I would love to select this option on within your platform. And if they wanted to send me a message, a, a notice pops up and says, hey, you gotta complete your profile fill in your photo, put a little text, verify your ID. This will increase the chances of you being accepted or getting a response from a host. Questions I have specifically for you, Airbnb. The first and most absolutely important is why do you treat me 
like a delinquent racist. You don't show me the guest profile photo because you believe I will be racist and deny them if they're not of the same color skin as me. If I decline a request, you make me tell you why I declined that request and let me know that it may be reviewed. This is frustrating on numerous levels. And in fact, believe it or not, the photo a guest chooses for their profile tells me a lot about who that guest is. It gives me a piece of the puzzle so that I avoid guests who are not a good fit. Okay, now that is the end of the real negative stuff. Now, honestly, these are questions I have for you guys that I hope that you can answer publicly. Now, if my listing has a last minute cancellation, does my listing get a search boost for guests searching for that listing on that date? I have a flexible cancellation policy. Most guests don't cancel that day or the day of, but when they do, I'm wondering, do I get a search rank boost? I encourage the hosts in my host community, I encourage them flexible cancellation policy. It makes for a better guest experience. I know that you Airbnb, if the guest cancels, you will reach out to me anyways to try and get a refund. So I just recommend flexible cancellation policy. In addition, most of the times my, my places get booked up because I have the best place in the area. So I'm high in search anyways, but to encourage more flexible cancellation policies, which I know you want to do, answering this and letting, letting hosts know, hey, if you do get a last minute cancellation within the next you know 72 hours before booking date, we do actually get you a little boost in search that would go a long way into increasing the amount of flexible cancellation policies because on the other side there's a lot of airbnb gurus that suggest a strict cancellation policy is better for your bottom line hosts hosts with strict cancellation policies make more on average i debate that but that's what their stance is at what point does the declining a guest reservation actually hurt my search rank i know that one decline doesn't matter you take a look at patterns, but how many? What kind of pattern, what, what length? Three cancellations in three months, three cancellations in a year? Give us some insight into this, please. Now, about a year ago, I was managing an Airbnb listing for a host, and you asked them to verify their ID. Seems reasonable, however, you asked them to verify their ID three years after they were a host, a successful host, and then you paused their listing while you verified the ID. In my professional business where I help Airbnb hosts, I get messages all the time similar saying you're blocking their account when they have existing reservations while you verify their accounts. I hope, one, one thing that I hope you guys can consider is on the map, show pins, if there's a building with, with like 50 listings or four listings in it, show a pin that says, hey, there's four listings in this location. Because if a guest sees that one pin there, and it's not suitable for them, but I might have three other listings that might suit their needs, well, the guest is gonna go further away rather than uh, understanding that, if, that there might be more than one listing right at that exact location. Why do you guys delete messages and reservations from reservations with problems, often um, leading to a resolution request? There's been times in my past where I've had problem guests and you guys totally wipe that reservation out of the system. That seems to be not okay. I, I want records of that. Why do you do that? What happened to create Balo? Remember that tool you guys had years ago where, where the host and the guests could create their own Balo? Balo, for those of you who don't know, is Airbnb's logo. It's uh, the first four words of their slogan, which is belong anywhere, B-E-L-O. And it was chosen because it's pronounceable by anyone, most people on the world, around the world, no matter what language they speak, it's pronounceable Balo. Why did you get rid of that tool? That was cool. I want you to bring that back. Okay, hey, that wraps up my my feedback for you, Airbnb. Um, I took quite a long time wrapping around my thoughts. I told you it was three years, but I even took more time kind of assembling it into these three categories and ranking it by level of importance. I hope you paid some attention. If you're a host watching this, how am I am I hitting points that you thought? If I did hit a point, maybe the top two or three pain points you have, throw it in the comment section below so that um, Airbnb can really take notice. Hey, these are issues that are really causing the host community pain. We got to do something about this now.